Greetings. Let's talk about jicama. <laughs> jicama, or the yam bean. Uh, this is a crop from Mexico. I've discussed it here before on the channel. It's the time of year when ordinarily we will harvest our jicama. Jicama is really an oddball when it comes to a uh, farm or garden crop because the plant has two completely different cycles depending on the day lengths and what time of year it is. And those cycles are very important if you intend to grow the plant. Now the beauty of jicama is that if you have mild weather where you live with no frost between September and Christmas, this is one of the easiest crops there is to grow because seeds that are planted during the month of September will grow up, create green vines, and then in turn create that nice big turnip type root that the jicama makes by Christmas. That's a pretty short window. So say September 15th from a seed to 25th of December is all that it takes to produce the crop. Uh, the problem with jicama for people who live in the northern tier is that if you plant the seeds in spring when weather is mild, all you will get is a big long vine full of flowers and seeds. You won't get any of the nice turnip roots. So it requires that you have really mild weather or perhaps you're using a greenhouse during the shortening of the days from September to the shortest day of the year in December. That's what triggers bulbing of the plant. I'm not terribly impressive but right down there on the ground next to my shed wall you will see some uh, somewhat rough looking jicama plants in pots. Um, it's at this time of the year that the top vine begins to die back. Even in Hawaii, once it reaches the shortest day of the year and makes that tuber, the top is going to die back completely. And so it'll take it a while to waste away, but it's in the process. You see yellowing leaves over there and brown spots. This is a normal occurrence with jicama, and it's also the sign that your crop is ready. Check this out. So, right here is a jicama plant that was planted from seed in September and was grown out in the rain on the nursery tables. But once I saw that the vine was beginning to die back like this, I went ahead and I put them underneath the edge of the shed roof to try to keep the soil dry. Because, take a look inside this pot. Now, is that amazing? We got one gallon container here that's literally squeezed out on the sides from this enormous turnip like root that's grown inside the pot. Now, if this was out in the rain around here at this time of the year and it's the plants going dormant, that root will suck up moisture and it will go pop. And so, naturally, it actually requires a dry late fall early winter in order to be able to actually produce properly because if winter weather is wet and rainy it will explode in the field but because you can grow this thing in a one gallon pot to fruition it really you can get by that problem just by simply accommodating the plant and once the tuber forms moving it to shelter so it stays dry. It will die back slowly in the pots and then you can harvest this all winter long as you need it right out of the soil. I mean, look at this thing. Is, is that remarkable? I, I have a hard time imagining that this is possible, but it's really true. So there are good looking tubers in almost all of the containers down there. I got a few losers, but very reliable plant. Now, I'd like to show you uh, some of the seeding, though. Right over here is the summer produce of the jicama vine. This is a vine that was planted from the tuber in spring. And this is what we end up with. There isn't much of a root underneath there, so we don't have the nice yam bean. But what we do have is a whole bunch of seed pods out here ripening up that will actually make the seed to use for next September's planting. 
So as you can see, planted in fall, it takes less than three months to make a tuber. Planted in spring, it takes pretty close to about nine months or more in order to be able to ripen seeds, perhaps even a little bit more. But if it is planted in spring, you don't get the tuber. Okay, you get the seeds. Um, and so it pretty much means that in the United States, you're either going to be in Hawaii, in Puerto Rico, in the Virgin Islands, um, you could be in South Florida and the Keys. There may be a few spots right down along the Mexican border in San Diego, for instance, in California, where this does work out. Otherwise, if you do have a greenhouse on your property, it's a real easy crop to grow on a bench inside the greenhouse in late fall. So it's pretty neat. The uh, tuber itself is uh, its a legume, and so it has a subtle pea-like flavor to it, but it's wet, somewhat sweet, fairly crunchy. Um, it's not as wet, nor is it as uh, sweet as yacon, but it makes a real good addition to salads. Um, I like to make salsa from jicama, mixed with peppers and onions and cilantro. Well, the plant has quite a few good culinary uses. I'm sure I have not discovered them all yet. Um, I'm relatively new at successfully growing jicama. I wasn't able to do this until I moved to Hawaii. So if you happen to live here in Hawaii, oh, dude, this is easy. Do it, do it. It's really, really easy. Um, the seeds are available from the University of Hawaii. They're usually available on most good seed racks. If you're interested, this is not the time to plant jicama. This is the time to think about it and to harvest your jicama. Aloha from Hawaii, and everybody have a great New Year's.